Okay, let's continue with the electric circuits topic and look at the subtopic of electrical power. And in this one, we're really going to explore, I won't even say the real world applications. I think all of this has lots of real, real world applications, but the sort of everyday, um, the everyday applications of, of electric circuits that, that probably are things that we deal with every day, or at least we should be thinking about every day for, for, for everyone, whether you're a physics student or not a physics student. So let's get into it. So electrical power. Let's, let's just take a little trip back in what we've looked at and, and get to the point that we need to get to today. We already know that electric potential difference, or delta V, is defined as the work done per unit charge in moving a charge between two points. So delta V, the potential difference, or the voltage we can use either word, is equal to the work done per unit ch charge. We rearrange that equation, we can see that the work done is equal to the charge times by the voltage that it passes through. So we can work out how much work is done on a charge. Work done is equal to energy used. Remember, energy is the capacity to do work. So revising over that stuff that we, we talked about earlier, when we talked about potential difference. Then when we did electrical current, we talked about that electrical current is the flow of charge, normally electrons, I equals Q on T. Uh, we can rearrange that formula also to get Q equals I times T. So the amount of charge is equal to the current times by the time that it's on for. Now, let's do a little bit of maths. If we substitute Q equals IT into W equals Q delta V, so we put this Q here, well, put IT, which is what Q is equal, into this formula here. This gives us a way to work out the work done, that is the energy used in terms of current and voltage. And, and current and voltage are the things that we, can norm, we normally talk about, and they're the things that can be easily measured in an electrical circuit with a multimeter or an ammeter or a voltmeter or whatever you want to use. So, the work done which is equal to the, the energy used, is equal to the current, I, multiplied by time, multiplied by delta V, the voltage. Power is defined as the rate of doing work. So power is work over time. Um, power is measured in watts. We give that the symbol W. Obviously, you'll often hear people talk about kilowatts as well, which one kilowatt is 1,000 watts. You will also may have heard of the old unit of horsepower. One horsepower is equal to 750 watts. Um, that's, if you like, the olden imperial measurement, if you like, for power. So, putting all that together, electrical power can be determined using power equals work done over time. But we know that work done is equal to I times T times delta V. The T there and the T here cancel. So we get this very simple relationship that the power is equal to the current times by the voltage. So if we want to know how much power... A device is using if we know the current that it's drawing we know the voltage it's operating at we can work out the power we can also um, readily rearrange that formula so that if we know the power and the voltage we can work out the current it would draw so i would be equal to p over delta v um, i've just divided both sides by voltage there or we could work out, if we needed to, I think this is less common, but you could work out that voltage is equal to the power divided by the current. So we now have a way we can measure voltage and current and work out the amount of power that a device um, is using. And when I say power here, I don't mean power as in maybe how much power it uses for your power bill. I mean power like the power your car engine has, how much energy does it use per amount of time, how many watts or kilowatts does it use. I think when you get into some questions for that, hopefully you won't find that too, um, too challenging. Um, so um, yeah, we'll get into some questions. Well, I'll get you guys to get into some questions shortly. But for now, that is electrical power. Power is equal to current times voltage. But I've tried to give you an explanation of where that comes from. If you go on and do year 12 physics, this sort of show that approach where you use different equations to work out a new equation is something you'll have to do quite a bit. So it's a good skill to start developing now. Let's keep moving. 
So we need to talk about a kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour is a very common unit. When you get an electricity bill, it will have your energy use in kilowatt hours. When you um, look at appliances with the sticker, the energy rating, they will often tell you how many kilowatt hours this would use in a year. Um, when you buy a, a battery for your house, it'll talk about how many kilowatt hours does that battery store. Um, when you even talk about electric cars now, they talk about kilowatt hours being um, the, the battery capacity of those cars in the same way we might talk about litres in the petrol tank when we talk about con uh, conventional com internal combustion engine cars. Now, the first thing, electrical energy use is usually met in kilowatt hours. That's sort of what I just said. A kilowatt hour is a measure of energy use, not power. So power is the rate of doing work. It's how fast or slow you're doing work. Energy is your capacity to do work. How much work can you do? When we are using kilowatt hours, we are looking at energy, the well, either the capacity to do work or the amount of work that's been done. Not how fast or slow that work has been done, that's power. But you'll see where it comes from. A kilowatt hour is the energy used if you run a one kilowatt device, so a thousand watt device, for one hour. So a typical thousand watt device, I think your toaster might be something that's about a thousand watts. If you ran that for one hour, that would be one kilowatt hour of energy. So um, we just saw on the previous slide, we'll write that out again. Another way to think of this is that uh, the work done is, actually let's go back a step actually, let's say that power is equal to work done over time, so work done or the energy is equal to power times time, power is measured in kilowatts, in this case time is in a what we call non-SI, a non-standard unit of hours, so kilowatts times time gives you an measure of the work done or the amount of energy. So, now, the standard unit for time is in hours, it's seconds, and there's 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes an hour. So there's 60 times 60, which is 3,000 seconds in an hour. A kilowatt is 1,000 watts. So 1,000 watts times 3,600 seconds, basically using this formula here, is equal to 3,600,000 joules or 3 million six hundred thousand kilojoules which another way to think of it is one kilowatt hour is equal to three thousand six hundred kilojoules from memory a can of coke has about six hundred kilojoules of energy so if you drank six cans of coke you'd get about one kilowatt hour of energy for your body um, which is a lot of energy body doesn't need that much coke don't drink six cans of coke a day um, health message from Stan um, so that is a kilowatt hour. It's a measure of energy and it's the energy usage unit, if you like, that we get charged in on our power bills at home. The other thing that's important to think about is energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is basically the useful energy you get out of a device divided by the total energy you put into it. So, for example, light bulbs, we often talk about energy efficient light bulbs. An energy efficient light bulb will produce a lot of light energy compared to the electrical energy that goes into it. An inefficient light bulb will only produce a small amount of light energy compared to the total energy that goes in. So we could work out the total energy that goes in by going current times voltage to work out the, um, the total energy. Oh, sorry, that would... Sorry, that would give us the total power. Um, so we then need to times that by time to, to get the energy that we would use. And then we could work out, you know, if we had some device that measured light energy, we could measure how much light came out. If we looked at the useful energy, the light energy produced divided by the electrical energy that went in, times that by 100, that'll give us the energy efficiency as... A, um, and I should have probably put this here, doesn't matter, as a percentage. 
So let's look at an example here of how we might use this all and what we've learned up until this point as well. So I've got, just because I found this out the bag, back was the easiest thing I could find, I went and found the stick mixer. Most electrical devices will have a label on it that looks like this and it will tell us the voltage it's designed for either the power rating or sometimes it will tell us the current. But this one tells us the voltage and we'll just go with the upper figures here, 240 volts, 220 watts of power. So the power rating in this case is 220 watts. The voltage straight from there, 240 volts. If we then want to work out the current that that would draw, we can then go, well, we know that power is equal to voltage times current. So rearrange that. Current is equal to the power divided by the voltage, which is equal to 220 divided 240, which is equal to naught. Oh, that didn't work. Hang on, just get my pen back. Equal to 0 0.92 amps. Now, we might, not so relevant probably for a stick mixer, but if we're dealing with heaters and things like that, we want to know what's the effective resistance of that device. So we know that resistance, well, once again, if you're like me, I remember always that current is equal to voltage over resistance. Greater the voltage, the greater the current, the greater the resistance, the less the current. So that resistance is equal to voltage over current which is going to be equal to 240 divided by 0 0.92, which will be equal to, that should be equal to 261, if we round that up, 261. Ohms would be the effective resistance of that stick mixer if it was operating at 220 watts. Now, let's say you wanted to work out how much that was costing you to run. So what would be your typical running period? So let's say you like making lots and lots and lots of smoothies in the morning and just to get a sort of meaningful number, let's say you spend 15 minutes making smoothies with your stick mixer in the morning which will equal to 15 times 60 which will equal which will equal 900 seconds so we can now work out the energy usage there because the energy usage now we could do this couple of ways we could go to the power times voltage times time or we could just go to the the energy usage which is basically the work done equals power times time so that's going to equal 220 times by 900 which is going to equal times just type away on the calculator here that's going to equal 198,000 joules, which is going to be um, 198 kilojoules. And then, I'm running out of space in this one, let's work out the, we need to convert that um, oh, I've just realised there's a mistake in these notes that I didn't pick up. That should not say one kilowatt hour equals 3,600,000 watts. That should say joules there. So if I want to go 198 kilojoules, I've got to divide that by 3,600 because there's 3,600 kilojoules in a kilowatt hour. 
and that is going to give me, sorry, this box is getting a bit messy. That's going to give me 198 divided by 3,600. That's going to give me quite a small number. Is that right? Yep. 0 0.055 kilowatt hours. So, sorry, I've got a bit messy there, but hopefully you can follow that. So not a lot of kilowatt hours. Now, I looked at my electricity bill. You can look at yours. Everyone's on different rates and different plans. But basically my normal non-peak typical demand electricity is 44 cents per kilowatt hour. So each kilowatt hour I use costs me 44 cents. So if I go 0 0.055 times 44 cents that is going to tell me that that would cost me 2.42 cents so if we were using a bigger device we'd probably convert that to dollars and work it out in dollars but for this one i think we can do it in cents so that 15 minutes is making smoothies in the morning doesn't cost me a huge amount in electricity. Two, not even two and a half cents worth of electricity. Um, but yeah, 220 watts is a fairly low device and 15 minutes is a reasonably short time. But that shows you that process of how we can use the power information, power equals voltage times current, power equals work done over time. Ohm's law, I equals V over R, etc etc conversion between kilojoules and kilowatt hours to work out how much energy something would use what i would like you to all do for some homework and this will be good preparation for when we do our assessment go and find a device it might be your playstation it might be a tv it might be your fridge it might be your air conditioner well it might be a bit harder to find the details on um, find a device, go through that process. What's its power rating? What's its voltage? How much current does it draw? What's its resistance? Heater, though, is a good one if you've got heaters. How long would you typically run for it, run it for? Just You can sort of estimate that. Work out what the cost would be. We will talk about that later in class, later in the week. Okay, that is it for electrical power. And that is effectively our last subtopic for the electricity or the electric circuits topic. Um, as I said, we may also we will also cover later on, but not formally, um, some stuff on a heat and the role between electricity and heating water and all that sort of thing. But that's it for now. Thanks. <laughs>